Hello, everyone, and welcome to Music Streaming 101. My name is Ole Kagan, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for LA County Library. Now, I'd like to introduce to you today's speaker. Adriana Albizures is an adult services librarian at the Culver City Library, formerly a member of the Make Mo team. <laughs> Make Mo is stands is a maker mobile and as she spent last few years doing STEAM science, technology, engineering, arts, and math programming for people of all ages at many different places in libraries and out. Today, Adriana is going to be teaching us about music streaming. Adriana, the stage is yours. Thank you, Oleg, and thank you for always the lovely introductions. Um, so hello, everyone. Good morning. And yes, today we are going to look into various music streaming apps. Um, so let's see what is music streaming. Streaming music is a way to listen to music that lets us enjoy um, tunes without owning the music, although there are times where we can own it, and but we'll get more into that. That means that people can choose from catalogs over tens of millions of songs without having to have the uh, ha having them physically in our storage, you know, like a CD or a, um, a vinyl. So you'll just have it on your phone or you can have it on your iPad or another listening device. So our objective today is to look into free streaming platforms. So we're going to learn what is uh, music streaming, um, learn about the different features of each app used, in or used to stream music, discuss the pros and cons of streaming music, um, streaming and owning, and look into alternatives to listen to music. Uh, so we're going to explore different possibilities. So if you want to listen to an album by your favorite artist that um, maybe that came out yesterday, I know someone recently over the weekend, who was it? Taylor Swift recently announced that she was going to come out with a new album in October. So that's something that you might look into if there are going to be available in your streaming device, I mean, your streaming apps. So we're going to look into what your options are going to be, which one will make sense to you, because each one are, they're all pretty much the same. There are little things that are a little bit different. And that's what we're going to look into in order to see what exactly it is that you like. And of course, with any app, you, you can always have more than one because it's up to you of how you want to use your app. So what app should you use? And these are questions that you should always ask yourself is how do you wanna use this um, streaming app? Are you using it for commuting from home to work and work to home? Or is it something that you just wanna use during your gym time? So those are different ways on how you want to use it and what kind of music you want. So why use streaming app? Using a music streaming app will let you listen to music anywhere. You can also discover new, new artists or new genres. You can also reconnect with old favorites. One of my favorite things is right now that I listen to um, like social, like, um, like TikTok is people are bringing back music that I used to listen to when I was a kid. And I'm like, wow. I remember that song and it's very nostalgic. So it's a great way to reconnect with old, with old favorites. But you can also create playlists. So you better believe I created a 90s playlist so I can listen to. And if I want to, I can also share this playlist with, um, with other friends. So if I wanted them to check it out, like, hey, I made this playlist. I know you have like Spotify. Um, so I'm going to share this with you. This is like the new way of mixtapes. Who did mixtapes? Let's see if anyone in the chat ever made a mixtape or a mix CD. Because that is something that I remember doing. One of my favorite things 
when I was a kid is I would get a tape, put it in my boom box and wait for the song to play on the radio, right? <laughs> so I can have the recording on my little, my, my little tape. So um, this is like very nostalgic for me. Um, music has always been very special to me. Um, I know, and it's very special to others. So when you're able to share it or say that music, um, it's great. And so this is just another platform in order to do this. So it's it's something that looks different, but it will still have that same feeling. So we're gonna look into different music streaming apps. So I see a lot of people, my dad was good at doing this for me and my sisters, oh, how fabulous. Oh, <laughs> courting ritual, yes, I remember that. Oh, thank you for everyone for sharing. I made a mix CD for my former girlfriend and now my wife, it worked, <laughs> that's lovely. Oh, it's a great pastime. Thank you everybody for um, including this in the chat. Thank you for sharing. So yes, music is very meaningful. It, it, it touches us in a meaningful level. So when we can enhance it with new technology, it's great. And so we're gonna learn about that. So we're gonna look into uh, the difference between streaming and owning. But there are going to be some apps that I'm going to be talking about where you are going to be able to download. So we're, we'll look into that in a little bit. So streaming is when you have no ownership to the rights of this music. Um, a lot of times it's the, um, the recording company or the artist that will have owning rights. And they allow for these streaming sites to have um, possession of this music. And we'll look into that more, but at any time, if they don't want to, they can remove their music from that platform. And we're gonna talk about the cons about that, but at the end. Versus when you have an album or like a CD, um, you have that physical copy of that CD and you own it. Um, so that CD is yours. Um, you can log in anywhere to listen to music um, versus owning, you have you can listen to it when you have access to that media. Um, streaming is easy to change artists and albums while listening versus owning um, like a physical CD or like a vinyl. You have to swap them out. You have to look for it. You have to organize it. You have to take care of them also. You have to maintain it. Who remembers having that little scratch that makes like the biggest difference on your CD or like if you had a mixtape and the tape gets all jumbled up, right? So that is the difference between um, streaming and having like a physical CD. Um, as I mentioned, it can be removed um, by the service provider and with CD, you'll always have access to it so long as it plays. Um, a lot of times you will need um, internet access or a data plan in order to access uh, your music. Um, you And with owning one, you just need a device in order to play the music. Um, as far as space, there's very little space taken. However, um, on your phone, it does take up space. So sometimes um, if you have a lot of streaming apps, that app is going to take storage on your phone. And as I mentioned before, if you have CDs, if you have vinyls, it's going to take up a lot more space. So here are a list of um, streaming apps that we're going to talk about. Um, we have Spotify, Amazon Music, Pandora, iHeartRadio, um, YouTube Music. Um, I didn't change it on here, but it's YouTube Music. And then we're talking about Freegal, and Hoopla, and these are two um, music um, downloads that you can have access to with your library card. So we're gonna look into those two as well. So with Spotify, you will need to create an account. I want to remind everybody again that these apps, um, they do have premium purchases, but I'm only talking about the free versions of these music um, apps. 
So um, there are going to be limitations to these because you don't have full access as a free, um, as a free service, but there is the option to upgrade. And a lot of times these play and these um, streaming apps will have trial versions. And I urge you to explore those, take advantage of the free ones if that is an option that you want to consider. But I'm also, I I'm just wanna talk about the free versions because a lot of times it, these are just good enough. So with Spotify, you do have to create an account you have access to over 70 million songs plus 2.2 million podcasts. So if you like listening to podcasts, um, a lot of these um, music streaming apps will have access to them. You are able to create a playlist and these are either user cre and created or the computer itself from Spotify will have playlists created as well. As I mentioned, there are limited features. So you have six skips per hour. So let's say you're listening to a station and you don't like a song, you don't like the next song, you don't like the next song or the next song, and you already skipped three, six songs in a row, then you're gonna have to listen to the next song until the next hour. So sometimes that can be an inconvenience because you cannot play back a song. So let's say you're really liking that song, but it's almost over and you want to hear it again, it's not going to let you. You you have to wait until that song plays again. But something I do like about these is that you can like a song. And if you like it, Spotify and a lot of these other, um, pro, uh, these other music apps will learn what your tastes are and will most likely play the song again at a later time or play similar songs or other related songs that you may think that you might like. There's also no offline play. What that means is that if you're not connected to the internet, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi um, or with your data plan, then it's not going to play music. It happens to me all the time if I'm on the road and I'm somewhere where um, where my data is a little spotty, then it goes offline and it can get annoying, but luckily I'm, it, it, ha it doesn't happen as often. It's only really when I'm like going on a road trip and I'm going somewhere in the deserts or something. <laughs> Um, you are able to share with others. Um, it does have ads. So if ads is something that you're not interested in, then um, this is what the price you pay for it being free are the ads. As I mentioned, there are paid upgrades if that's something that you want to look into. But one of the things I like about the like Spotify is their playlist. I remember I was at uh, um uh, Disney with my friend and she was really liking the music that was being played and she says oh I wonder if they have a playlist and I was like what are you talking about and I was like oh I wonder if they have a playlist because when we go to um Oga's Cantina at the Star Wars lounge they have a playlist and you can listen to it even if you're not um at the at the place and I thought that's amazing and when I looked it up they have so many other playlists available so sometimes you can be at a location and maybe like hey is there a playlist in this area it doesn't always happen um, but I typed in like California Adventure I'm a big Disney fan so I typed in California Adventure and what do you know they have music that's related to California Adventure um, that it's like um, very nostalgic, where it's like from 1940s. And they actually play that music when you're entering the Buena Vista Street. And I thought that was amazing, uh, where you can go into Spotify or other types of playlists and they have um, a curated playlists in order for you to enjoy. So here is a layout of their, um, on their app. As you can see here is music that it has recently played. 
and it has things to get me started if I want to listen to Cafe Tacuba or Ella Fitzgerald um, it'll give me recommendations and here's what I was talking about on the right side Star Wars Galaxy Edge Ogus Cantina and here is the list and I just thought it was amazing how um, you if you like something right there and there I can look it up on my phone and see if it's available. Um, so it's easy access. And even if I don't want to listen to it at that moment, I can like it and then remember it later. Like, oh yeah, I like this playlist. So it, you have control of when you want to listen to the playlist um, at your own time. You get to create a playlist, um, your own library, I mean, and you can have access to their stations. As I mentioned, you don't have access to play these songs individually. Um, wait, yes, you do. Wait, I, <laughs> I've been studying a lot of these, and so they kind of mesh together. I think you can play these. Actually, I'm confusing it with Pandora. Pandora is the one where you can't play the music individually. Here, you can. Um, so if there's a music that you want to play, you can play that song. You just don't get to download it and listen to it offline. My apologies, <laughs> but we'll look into Pandora and see how the difference is between Pandora and Spotify. But yes, you can listen to the songs individually here, and you. Um, but where you can't do is download them. So here is Amazon Music. Um, again, you do have to create an account. However, you do not have to be a member of their prime in order to, so you don't have to pay in order to have access to their music. You can just create an account and you'll have access to their Amazon music, the free version. So again, you'll have access to their top playlists and thousands of stations. You also get to create um, your own playlist or curated stations. There are limited features um, and you don't have access to their full catalog, um, but you do have access to a lot of their music. There are ads and there are paid um, options. You can play music individually and you can save like the whole album if you like to do that as well. And so they also have access to podcasts and this is their layout. Um, again, you have access to their music, they have podcasts, they have different stations that you can listen to. You can listen to songs individually and right here in the bottom is where you have your menu, home, find, your library, Alexa. Alexa is a um, service that they provide where it works very similar to um, like Siri, I hope it didn't hear me, <laughs> um, where it'll tell you like, um, like, oh, play this song for me, or what song is this? And I'll be able to listen and you can use that function. Um, and of course, the last button is if you want to upgrade your features, you have that opportunity to do that right there. Oops. And this is what it looks like when you're playing your music. X-Ray is where it gives you like um, the lyrics to the song. And here, as I mentioned, um, it'll play a station. So this one is actually like a John Williams station. So even though it says Jurassic Park, um, the reason why it's playing Hedwig theme is because I wanted it to play Hedwig, but then it changed the song to Jurassic Park. Um, here is your search. You can search by genres, listen on demand, like the latest charts. So if you want to know what's popular, it lets you browse it through in that way too. And then you have access to your library and all of your playlists that you would want to listen to. So it's very easy access. This is actually the one I use. Um, I actually chose to upgrade um, not too long ago. Um, I, I ended up liking you, in Amazon Music, um, the layout, it was easy to use. I also have um, like my Echo. So it was just an easier, um, it was an easy option for me to choose um, Amazon Music. But 
that's what I was talking about is that you you can use different types of um, music streaming service to see which one is right for you, but you can still have the option to have others. So like I said, I really like the playlist from Spotify, but a lot of those music are free. So I was just like, oh, I can just keep Spotify for free, but pay for Amazon music. So you can you can see how it fits to your lifestyle and how you want to use it. So this is when I confused uh, Pandora with Spotify. I always confuse the two. But with Pandora, you do have to create an account. Um, you have access to curated stations. Um, so what that means is that um, you can't play songs individually. You have to listen to them through their station. So um, you can either create them by the, the likes or dislikes. Um, so by your dislikes, it means that it will learn that you don't like the song and it'll remove it and it won't play that song. Um, you can have, you can create up to 100 stations. So um, that's a lot of stations. <laughs> I don't think I only had like three or four stations, but it'll have your likes or if you have your morning commute station, your gym station, so, or something to relax kind of station. So available features that it has, it has unlimited skits, skips as long as you watch an ad. So you'll get to a certain point where you're skipping and then all of a sudden it's going to say, oh, you have to watch this ad if you want to skip. If not, then, um, it just won't play another song. Um, there's no playback. Um, there's no offline play. So you do have to be connected to the internet or um, your data. Um, one device at a time. I forgot to mention that with the other ones. A lot of these you have to have only with one device. So what that means is that if I'm play playing it on my phone and then all of a sudden I want to use it on my Echo, my echo is going to be like, no, you can't play this. You have to like take it off your phone or you just have to listen to it on your phone. So you can only choose one device. You can share your playlist with others. Uh, as I mentioned, there are ads, um, but there are available upgrades. And another thing I forgot to mention is that sometimes they have different tiers. So it, sometimes they have family plans or individual plans or where you have access to more features, but you still can only play on one device. So a lot of times they'll have different um, um, different options for you. And here's the layout for Pandora. As I mentioned, they have stations that they'll recommend. And here at the bottom, they'll have like your recommendations, your collections, and how you wanna search and your profile. And here, it, what, what, here's what it looks like when you're playing it. Here are your thumbs down for that you don't like and your thumbs up if you do like it. As I mentioned, you have this feature where like go back and play. Um, but if you try to push it, it'll tell you like, oh, not available. So even though the function is there, um, it'll tell you that you can't do that. So that'll happen a lot of times on these features, on these apps that will have the button or the feature available, but it'll, once you click on something, it'll tell you like, oh, you can't do that. In order to have access to that, you need to have to have the paid service. And here's what it looks like when you search. So here are my past searches. And here is my collection. So it was, I liked Pandora, I used it for a bit, um, but I, for me, I kind of liked having, um, I liked being able to play um, individual songs. So, but my mom liked it. <laughs> she didn't, and she, she tried using um, Amazon Music, but she was like, no, I like Pandora. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like that's what I mean by we all have our individual taste. We all have our own um, needs. 
or we're just already used to something um, and that's okay. Um, that's why we show you a variety of apps in order for you to choose the right um, streaming service for you. And then there's iHeartRadio. What I like about iHeartRadio is that you don't have to have, you don't have to create an account, but if you do have to download the app if you want to play offline. I mean, not offline, if you want to like take it with you. <laughs> um, but there's thousands of local and international radio stations. Um, why did I put radio stations twice? <laughs> um, so there, there are a lot of radio stations that you can listen to. And what's great about this, my dad doesn't use iHeartRadio. He uses another one. I can't remember what it was. Um, but he, when my dad comes and visits, um, visits and comes from Guatemala to visit us, he will use this app in order to listen to his radio back in Guatemala. And so I thought that was very interesting. Um, the advancements with technology, it really opens doors, you know, it opens opportunities, you know, where my dad can still listen to his radio um, back in Guatemala, back from Guatemala. So, uh, or if you're curious, like, let's say you're going to go to France and you're like, hey, you know what? Let, let me take an opportunity to listen to the radio um, and let's see what stations they have. What are they listening to? What are their likes? This is a great way to get to know of what's currently happening over there, especially if you have access to these and it's free. Um, of course, there are limited features like the limited, there are limited skips per day. There's no playback, no offline play. But what I do like is that they have a sleeper timer and an alarm. What that means is that if you are the kind of person that likes to listen to music while you go to sleep, you can put the music on and you can put a sleep timer and it'll, it'll turn off. Or if you like to wake up with music, you have the option to do that too. So I thought that was really great with iHeartRadio. If you like to wake up with um, um, the radio playing, you know, the weather or what, what traffic's going on or music. So this is a great option. Um, again, you can share with others. Um, there are ads, but there are paid upgrades. And this is what their layout looks like. They'll have recommended radio stations from your local area. So all I had to do is uh, put in a zip code. Um, you can also choose other cities. Um, here in the bottom are artist radio. I think that's what I meant to put, um, artist radio stations. Um, so if you want to listen to stations that are different playlists, that have recommended artists, you can do that too, or genres. So it's not just radio stations. You can also listen to um, artist um, podcasts as well. So as you can see here, I was listening to the Foo Fighters. I wasn't listening to the radio. I was actually listening to one of the songs from the Foo Fighters. But if I want to, I can also listen to a radio station. So this was a, another app that I ended up keeping. I actually did not know anything about, um, I never used it before. I had heard of it, but I had never used iHeartRadio until I started doing my research for this. And it was actually one of the apps that I decided to keep because I thought it was very interesting, um, especially if I travel um, sometimes, like, you know, when you're traveling and then the radio changes and it's like, um, whatever town that you're going into and I was like wait but I'm still listening to the talk host <laughs> the DJ so um, I really like this um, I really like this app so I ended up keep keeping this one too and here are the list of live stations there are so many so if you want to listen to your Dodgers if you want to listen to public radio, these are all available to you and you can explore others because I don't know about you. Have you ever changed like the dials and um, not the dials, but like the radio and like there's like a good song that's playing and you just stop at like, but you forget what radio station that is like that would happen to me all the time. So this is a great way to see which radio station you're actually listening to. And so here is like all the radio stations that I liked. And then I'll, they'll have access to it, um, like easy access for it for me. 
Now we get to Freegal. Freegal is free with your library card. So if you have a library card, you can use Freegal. You have access to 15 million songs from Sony Music and 40,000 music videos. You are able to download five songs per week and you get to keep and share them. So I thought this is amazing because every week you can either use those um, downloads or not. You don't lose anything, um, but it doesn't also, it doesn't also um, roll over. It's just, you get five songs every week, but if you don't lose them, you lose them. Um, but it's really awesome if there are songs that you like and you wanna listen to it offline, you'll have access to this. And they do have the option for you to like download it on your phone, like have it on your iTunes or on a uh, on a third party playlist player. Um, I didn't look too much into that one, but you do need to have a computer in order to do that. It won't do it on your phone automatically. You need to have a computer and a third party um, um, access, Me so, um, music player access. But here is the layout in order for you to log in. You download the app through our, um, our website, LACountyLibrary.org, and you type in your card number, and you have a list of different featured artists, playlists. And if you don't know, we have um, playlists that we will um, feature out um, a lot. So as you can see here, we had our pride playlist. So we had music related uh, music um, and you are able to see what we recommend. So I encourage you guys to look into what playlists we have available in order to explore our recommendations. But you can also see other playlists that are available as well. As you can see here, you can play your music. It, the three dots, also known as the kebabs, uh, um, will give you, um, you click on it and it'll give you to option whether you want to play the song, uh, like the song, or download the song. Once you have the song playing, it'll ask you if you want to, da again, download it, add to your streaming playlist, or add to your wish list. Add to your wish list means that you liked it, but you're not ready yet to download it, that you're, you just wanted to have it on your list. That way you can get back to it later. And now we get to Hoopla. Hoopla, you can stream full albums. And this is where it makes different from Freegal is that you borrow them. You don't like in Freegal, you can down, you can listen to them or you can download them. Here, you only borrow them. Just like how you borrow a book um, from the library, you borrow a, a, a CD you borrow their, their albums. So you can borrow up to eight per month and they are in seven day lending period. So, so if you check out a album from Hoopla, you have access to it for seven days. And here is the layout and they have really great options. <laughs> I always knew they did, but they always surprised me. What an amazing catalog they have. And it surprises me too. Um, like I was listening to Hamilton. There's also audiobooks. There's ebooks. So it's not just music. So if you want to check out their catalog for um, uh, books, you can do that too. Uh, but they have amazing music as well. So as you can see here, I can choose which um, album I want to listen to. It'll let me know that I can access this um, music for seven days and it's going to return it and it's just going to ask me if I want to borrow and I said yes and so the first slide that I will this slide has three panels the reason why is because you can swipe left or right but the one in the center is your first um, screen and it's going to tell you like your uh, play like your volume, whether you want to go back a song, go forward a song. But if you could see here, there are things on the side where you can swipe left or right. If you swipe left, it'll give you access to the tracks so you can listen to them. 
individually like you can have control of like you know what I actually want to listen to story of the night actually I want to go back and listen to um Aaron Burser so you have access to these and then if you swipe right it'll just give you um, more options for to repeat the song or if you want to shuffle and now we get to YouTube. I didn't change that either. <laughs> now we get to YouTube music where you can listen and watch music videos. So you not only you get to listen to it, you can also watch them. You can also listen to individual tracks or the full album. However, there's no offline play. Um, that is one of the things about YouTube that with the app is that if I'm listening to a song and I want to go text my friend, um, it'll stop playing. So that's one of the downsides of um, YouTube music is that it'll just stop playing. I mean, with YouTube, but with YouTube music, it'll play the music. So here's the, um, here's the um, layout for YouTube music, um, not to be confused with YouTube. So there's YouTube where you can view videos and then there's YouTube music. Now they do have a free version um, I mean, they have a free version and a paid version. Um, but same thing where you don't have access to it is where um, um, like offline play, um, downloading it. So that's the difference. But it was a good, it was good. Like I liked it. They have, it was easy to use. Um, I don't know why I didn't really like it. I, I just ended up liking Amazon Music and Spotify more. And I just didn't want to have so many music streaming apps. Um, but it was a good choice, especially because I use YouTube a lot. Um, but I just didn't use it for YouTube music. But it was still great. It still had a lot of, a lot of mixes, a lot of stations, a lot of different choices of what I wanted. And I like the fact that you can watch videos, like music videos. And here is a list of like my recent activity, things I want to search or explore. And here's what it looks like when um, I am playing the music. You have the option to shuffle, go back and play a song, pause a song, go forward. Or if you want the album to repeat, um, it'll give you the option if a music video is um, available too. So here are some final tips. Be mindful of your surroundings. So music can be very enjoyable, but it can also be very distracting. As you can see, there's no one around this person, but like imagine if there is a group of people and you're listening to music, but there's things going out and going on. You want to be present. You want to make sure that you're in the appropriate area. Um, not, and like if it's too loud, it actually has happened to me before. I remember I was I was back in college. I had my headphones on and I was listening to music and I was zoned in. All of a sudden, I feel a tap on my shoulder and uh, a, a, a student was like, excuse me, do you mind lowering your volume? And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that it was loud. So even if I'm wearing headphones, be aware that someone might uh, it might be disruptive, but it also can be disruptive for you. Have, who here has ever done the slow cruise when you're looking for the address and you lower the volume and you're like, you need to lower the volume to see? Yes. The reason why is because we use our, our sense of hearing as um, like to concentrate but it can also be a distraction. So we can actually focus more when the music is either calm. So that's why they say listen to classical music or ocean waves when you're um, um, going to sleep. Music can be distracting. So yes, there is a reason why we lower the volume when we want to look for something because we want our mind focused. So be mindful of your surroundings but also excessive volume can also be damaging for our ears. So um, be mindful of your headphones and earbuds, like um, make sure they're clean, make sure that um, they are work appropriately, make sure that if it's um, 
in good quality because you know they can be wind up. Um, so those are things that you want to look into. Or if you want to use earbuds or or headphones that have the wires, but those are options that you're looking into because they can have a price. So if you want something that has sound quality, you're gonna pay a higher price. Or if you want something that's going to reduce sound where you don't wanna hear the traffic that's going on and you want a uh, noise reduction, then that's another option to look into, but that is a price. Now, as I was mentioning about um, owning rights to music, even if you download a song, sometimes you can lose that data and you may not get it back, um, but you also can lose access to that music. So an artist or a music um, music company, <laughs> recording company uh, can um, also limit your access. So if they don't want your, you to listen to that music, they can remove it. So it's happened a few times where I had a song and I, I'm paying membership for it. And one moment I'm playing it. And then the next day, the music is gone and it's gone because they don't have access to it. So if you are familiar with like things like Netflix or um, other video streaming services, you only have access to it as long as they have rights to it. So if you've ever seen that at the end of the month, like, oh, this, this movie isn't going to be available at the end of the month. And that's because they're going to lose their rights to it. And so that also means you're going to lose their rights to it. So that is the, that is the pros and cons of owning your music and streaming services is that um, we don't have to buy these music. We don't have to have loads of CDs or vinyls, we don't have to organize it, we don't have to worry about like maintenance. However, we don't own that music, we don't have control versus a CD, like I have that CD, I have that vinyl, and so it's mine, I can play it whenever I want. So that's where you kind of um, have that give and take kind of thing. But of course, here is some more research Courses, um, Emily's Post and Manners in a Digital World, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Remember, you can share music. So, like, you can share your music with your friends and family. So, and I like this book. <laughs> Kill Reply All, a modern guide to online etiquette from social media to work to love. Remember, some of you guys mentioned that your mixtapes um, helped you in that uh, arena. So, um, it's not over. You guys can still share music. <laughs> and of course, we have reference services. If you need information, speak to a librarian. Um, you can call your local library. You can also text us at 626-394-4019, Monday through Friday from 12 to 6. We also have Instant Librarian Monday through Friday from 12 to 6. You can also email us. Um, just go to lacountylibrary.org slash contact us and they'll have um, our webpage in order for you to, to reach us. And now it's time for our q and I hope you guys enjoyed um, all of these music streamings. Um, it was a lot of fun um, listening to music <laughs> and like, playing around with them. Um, but thank you, everyone. I was muted for a second there. Thanks, Adriana. Yeah. I, I enjoyed learning about it. I didn't know iHeartRadio had that, that functionality to listen to international music. That was actually really interesting. I, yeah. might, I might pop into some different countries to yeah, why listen not? to the music. It's not, all, it's not like all, because I tried looking for my dad's station. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I can't find it. And so No, I think it has to be part of the iHeartRadio yes, network. It has to be part of the iHeart yeah, network, yeah. So we've got a lot of good questions here. Um, let me see what we what we should start with. Well, one person asked, and then any this is not really the the angle of this presentation, but if somebody is a music artist, how do they upload their own music to some of these services? Do you know? So, oh man, when I was doing my research, there was one that was something Music Cloud, SoundCloud. SoundCloud, SoundCloud, mm -hmm. that is a great, I didn't look into that one 
because I even that would have been a really long program. <laughs> yeah. But SoundCloud is great for not only discovering new artists, but where you can upload your music mm. and make it available. Um, another one was I I don't know if you guys remember this MySpace. I what? think what I know MySpace is I think I didn't really look into that one too much either, but MySpace is also one that you can upload your music and but you it's also really great for discovering new artists. And then and then uh Nick pointed in the chat to CD Baby. Yes. Yes. CD Baby is old school. That's been CD yeah. Baby's been around for a long time. <laughs> and then also Bandcamp is one if we uh soundcloud bandcamp but those are all different services uh i know that with spotify you're able to you have to have your music uh as part of a distributor so mm -hmm. but yeah there's i'll post i have a link to to where to look for that for spotify specifically and i'll post that in the uh i'll post send that in the follow-up email okay so um let me see what the next question is so uh does freegal have podcasts Sorry. <laughs> no. No? I don't think so. No. I don't I, I have no. never seen I them no. I don't have the phone with me. I left that one where I had everything. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, but uh no, no. I want to say no. <laughs> Cause it's really just what Sony music has mm. of, like because it's it's, it's Sony a music catalog. Yeah. So in that case, so with Freegal also, when you so you you were able to download five songs, right? Yes. Now, does do you, can you download the music videos or is it just the songs? I know they have videos on there. Yeah, you, you know what? I didn't try to download the music videos. I know I saw a video, but I don't remember like because I was just curious. I should have looked at that part. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. Do I have Freegal on this one? You can get it on the, it's, it's available in the browser too. Yes. That's what uh, the other reason I liked Freegal is that you can, um, well, that's how you're able to download music because mm -hmm. you can download music on your phone, but it's going to be on your phone, but you can't play, like you can't connect it to your, um, like if you have Apple music, um, so like your iTunes, because you can download a song and like burn a CD and you can have a third party. Um, yeah, they're just MP3s from Freegal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can't download it on your phone. You can't? No. You I've never tried it. No, because uh, I tried it. Either I tried and I failed, but mm. I but when I looked it up, it was talking about how I had to do it on my computer, mm. download a song. And then have a third party. Yeah, you can put it, you can put it back on your phone, and if you have it, some sort of, and then put it back yeah. on the phone. But that was like, oh, just use Freegal. Like I'll just yeah, you can stream it if if you're connect, connected connected if your phone has data or if you're connected yeah. to Wi-Fi. So uh, here's this is more of a suggestion. Um, Elizabeth wrote that that she likes using Shazam, um, which is an app that lets you identify music that you hear in your environment. So if you have the app Shazam, and I think some phones will do that automatically now. Yeah, so uh, I, I, there are, that's the cool thing about Shazam is that they've partnered up, I forgot with who, but it's already embedded um, on it. So a lot of them, like, like I was saying with Amazon, I can just go on like, hey, Alexa, what song is this? But I can also do it on my phone. My like, I don't even have to be on my app. I can just be like, "Hey Siri, what song is this?" And I'll already start listening to it. My wife got a new phone, and I believe I, I turned that setting off automatically because it, I think it was set to on by default. Mm -hmm. So that if she'd be in a place and she'd look at her phone, the phone would actually say what song it was. <laughs> yeah, but um, what that limits is um, you can like yeah, you can use Shazam but it's just having less stuff. So instead of having the app Shazam, um, you could just have your phone. Mm -hmm. But that's where we were talking, I was talking about how you can create 
however you wanted to do it. Like I was talking about how telling my mom, like, mom, why don't you just use Amazon music? Cause you can choose what songs you want instead of Pandora choosing it. And she's like, no, right. I like it this way. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. The nice thing about Pandora is the discovery aspect of it. The discovery you, aspect, do, you don't yeah. know what's coming up next, but they sort of try to use their algorithm to figure out what the kind of things that you like. Yeah. And so my mom was like, no, no, I like Pandora. And I was just like, yeah. okay, like, but you can do that with, with Amazon music too. And she was like, no, I'm like, okay. well, she <laughs> likes it. So there you go. You like it, mom. Okay. <laughs> like, so you so, just work, you work with what works best for you. Um, yeah. But we, are, we are here to, to provide you the different types that are available mm. in order for you to explore and see what suits you best. Yeah, there are definitely many options. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember what this was in relate, what this, what program or app this was in relation to, but mm -hmm. uh, we had the question of what are curated stations? So um, what that means is that um, it, it was like Pandora where they will create a playlist or a station for you. And so if you want 90s music, they will have a 90s hip hop station and they will only play 90s hip hop. Um, so that what I mean is by they curated a station, but it's still random. So there's playlists where you know what songs are going to be in that, in that song, in that catalog. And then there are stations where it's a surprise. You yeah, it's just- like The know. algorithm does it for you. It yeah. just kind of figures out what you, what what the kind what songs are around, and then it just shuffles them for you. Yeah. So, a uh, question about iHeartRadio. Um, you said that iHeartRadio was international, and can you explain how to switch to the international stations once you get to iHeartRadio? Um. So you just what I ended up doing was I just searched um by country. Like there was a a choice where I could just um, choose the country that I wanted. And so I was looking if there was any stations in Guatemala. But Is it right on the front page? It was in the Explorer section. In the, oh, in the, the Explorer section. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if somebody wants to listen to to explore what international music there are, you hit Explore and then there should be some, some sort of option. Yeah, you click stations and then it's going to ask you like where, like what like either your location or you can choose like where you want it. All right. So the next question is if I'm listening at the airport, does that make my phone at risk for hacking with the airport or on a plane? Um, I would say that's pretty unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say if, if there is a risk, the risk is, is, negligible one should one shouldn't really worry about it. if you're listening to if you're streaming music onto your phone that's yeah it's very unlikely that you'll get hacked um so can you break down which of these services are available to play your music offline i'm sorry can you repeat that can you break down which of the services that you covered are avail have the availability or the feature to play music offline none of them Oh, except free goal because you can download it and hoopla because you can borrow the music but um all of these are not available offline they are only available um you can have access to them offline if you pay for those services right yeah i know spotify you have to pay for it to be able to download things mm-hmm mm -hmm. All right. Uh, somebody mentioned that they heard that the performers are not being paid fairly by streaming services. Um, do you have any thoughts or comments about that? Have you heard? Have you heard that? I've heard very little about it, but I've heard like where people are, like I, like that's what happened with title, and that is more artist controlled. I wonder if that title you can upload your own music. I'm not sure how that works, um, but like title was created by um very famous um hip hop artist Kanye is that Jay-Z 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 and Beyonce Usher Usher Oh Usher 
I, was it Usher? I, mean, I didn't realize that he was he was behind a title. I'm gonna find out right now. I think Usher. I can't remember. Oh, he was part of some other thing. I think maybe, but it, it was more artist controlled. So if that is something I didn't look into title, um, partly because like it's just um, I had already a lot of options, so I just wanted to do the 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 popular ones and some little different ones like like regal you know so we can talk about our services <laughs> um so i didn't really look into that one but i know that one was created because of the issues that they have with streaming services so that is a great question um but a lot of times the best way to support artists i think is going to their concerts <laughs> yeah so is there a way to listen to the music or movie on an airplane when you're required to turn off your laptop or phone? So I think we covered this already. It's you have to, with some of the services, you're allowed to download the music mm -hmm. to your phone. And so yeah. then you, you, you can be not, you can be totally offline and still listen to the music. But for many of these services, you have to actually pay to get that, that option. Yeah. All right. But that's why I try free go and hoopla. <laughs> Can you listen to Hoopla YouTube music and others through your car radio? Yes, because you can have the app. If you have Bluetooth in your oh, car. Oh, if you have Bluetooth, yes. Yeah. So have... there's, I mean, there's, I think there's really two options. Well, there's more than two, but two main options to listen to music from your phone to your car. The easiest yeah. one and the most common one for new cars is Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. The less common, but also, but just as easy is using the, uh, the headphone jack from your phone. It's a mini mm -hmm. plug. You you get a double sided mini plug, and you plug one side into your phone. And usually, cars will have an auxiliary plug, so and you plug the other end of that cable into your car, and it'll just play directly. And then you change your radio um, to aux uh, or auxiliary. That's how I used to do it in my old car. So yeah, then you can play anything from your phone. Yeah, you know, it'll just output sound right into your car. Uh, would all public library systems have access to Freegal? Like, not, like, like LAPL or Long Beach? Los Angeles Public Library does. Mm -hmm. um, not all of them do. So that's it really depends on the library system itself because library systems are the ones who each individual system chooses which uh, digital services to provide. So not all of them will have it, but a lot of the big ones tend to have Freegal. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody mentioned Mixcloud. I think that's one of the indie music services where you can upload your own music. Oh yeah, Mixcloud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in my notes to include as well. It's it's really hard to get a comprehensive list of these just because there's really quite there's a lot. So many. When when I first got this um, idea, um, by the way, thank you, my former coworker. <laughs> um, it, like I was like, oh yeah music streaming services like Spotify and like oh yeah and then I it was like opening Pandora's box <laughs> Pandora <laughs> I got you there <laughs> and like there's just so many out there that's why I was just like which one do I choose there's just so many yes and but I I decided to choose just like the popular ones um because I <sighs> wanted it to be more of an opportunity for you guys to share with um with people and so more people use spotify or pandora or amazon music and so it made it easier to share and so ultimately i ended up cho choosing those but yeah it appears that i cannot download either freegal or hoopla onto my computer is this true yes uh Yes, the reason is because they're web-based apps. So they're either apps for your phone or their websites. Uh, Freegal and Hoopla don't have software to load onto your, a PC. Yeah, I, I was using the web browser. Yeah, they're all within the web browser. They have either mobile phone apps or websites. And it's very user-friendly. It was very, you know, it was, it was, I like their layout. It was very simple, uh, not a lot of bells and whistles. So I like Freegal. I like, I really was impressed with Hoopla's catalog too. 
if they just have a lot of options for you. So uh, uh, Jessica made a comment in the chat. Uh, Hoopla also has a good selection of audiobooks. Yes. Yes. And uh, ebooks. User right here, big user. Hoopla has ebooks, has e audio, it has music. So they have amazing options. And yes. But don't forget to check out our roller. We also have Canopy. Canopy is great for movies as well. For music, yep. The Canopy has music? I mean, yeah. Really? <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. No, Canopy just has video. TV shows and movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of options. Uh, question, are you going to give a class on downloading movies on your phone and laptop in the near future and what those are? Uh, there is no current plan um, to, to deliver a class on downloading movies on to, onto the phone. That's not, a, that's not a topic that, that we've considered giving class about at this point, but in the post-event survey, feel free to put that into the, the question about what you'd like us to cover in the future, and we'll, you know, we'll take it under advisement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that email program was suggested by... Uh, people. People. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as somebody mentioned, Dale mentions there's no Freegal app for things like Android TV, but there is for Android on your phone or tablet. That is correct. Yeah, I don't think it integrates yeah. with like Roku or, or any of those other kind of aggregation uh, media uh, services. Okay. Well, we've covered quite a lot of questions. Thank you very much, Adriana. And for those interested in continuing your digital literacy mind expansion next week's class is organizing your email thursday at 11 o'clock uh you can always go to our virtual events um at lacountylibrary.org and see all of our virtual events including uh, organizing your email once again adriana thank you very much for this class and i appreciate all that you've done for our digital literacy offerings and for <laughs> makemo uh, for all the folks out there, um, we do appreciate if you fill out our, our post event survey. Uh, we read all of the all of the responses. Sometimes we respond to the responses, but we definitely take all of your feedback and try to try to, try to act on what we can. Yeah. And don't forget to create playlists and share with your families. Share the music you love. Yes. <laughs> and share the music they'll love. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a good outro there. Adriana, thanks again. And everybody, see you next time.